patients needed chemotherapy or not, based on analysis of just the H&E slide. Now remember, the H&E slide, the tissue slide, is obtained for any cancer patient, right? Because they're going to have a biopsy, they're going to have surgery in most cases. And so that slide that Dr. Patel and, and pathologists like her look at under a microscope, that can be digitized with a slide scanner. And those digital pathology slides can then be subjected to artificial intelligence. And we can prize out patterns from these slides that can now tell us about which patients have the aggressive disease and need, need chemotherapy versus the patients who don't need uh, the aggressive treatment uh, because they have less aggressive disease. And the beauty of this was that we could do this of a slide that was digitized, which, which means that we're not disrupting the entire clinical workflow for the pathologist. And so we came up with the concept of the image-based risk score or IBRIS. So the idea was to use AI with these pathology slide images to be able to find these patterns that could tell us about disease aggressiveness and health and risk stratification. Well, what goes into these tools? What goes into these algorithms? Uh, so here's an example of uh, these algorithms at work. Um, a large part of this is what is called deep learning or neural networks. We're not going to have time to get into the minutiae of how these neural networks work. But these are supervised machine learning algorithms that are data hungry. Uh, essentially, the machine learns to recognize certain patterns and goes and identifies similar looking patterns in a new image. What you're seeing here is the application of these deep learning neural network algorithms to go in and find hundreds of thousands of cancer cells and lymphocytes on these large digital pathology images. And once we've identified these various different cells, we can now start the process of predicting outcome and predicting therapeutic response. Now, another example of where we're using these kind of AI machine learning approaches is to really try to find features that are interpretable. One of the challenges with deep learning is that they tend to be fairly opaque. They, it doesn't, it's not really clear what the machine learning algorithm is identifying. And so in our group, we've taken a different approach. We've taken the approach that we want to find features of patterns from these images that are interpretable, that resonate with what we know about the pathobiology of the disease. And one such example is collagen. Collagen is a component of a number of different tumors. It is the uh, sort of the, the fibrous filaments that are running across the, uh, the, the tissue. And we've known for a long time that collagen architecture and collagen arrangement on slides can tell us a great deal about the aggressiveness of the cancer. And so in work that uh, we've, uh, we've recently uh, presented at, uh, at a national conference, uh, as well as uh, have under uh, review, uh, we demonstrated that we could use machine learning to first go in and identify the collagen fibers on tissue slides of breast cancer patients. And what we were then able to demonstrate was that the arrangement of the collagen fibers assessed quantitatively and mathematically was quite different in those patients who had poor survival, short-term survival, that is, they did poorly, uh, in contrast to patients who tended to do much better, patients who had longer term survival, favorable survival. And what we found was that when you looked at patients who tended to do very poorly, the collagen fiber orientation was very structured. I mean, it was very ordered. In patients who tended to do well, the collagen fiber orientation was very disordered. That is, the collagen fibers were sort of all over the place. They were very chaotically arranged. Now, why? Would that be so? Well, it turns out that if you look at patients who tend to do poorly, the fact that the collagen fibers are arranged in the linear fashion means that the cancer cells can hop a ride on the collagen fiber tracks and essentially migrate onto distant regions and therefore metastasize. When it is more discordant and chaotically arranged, it's more difficult for the cancer cells to really migrate to distant regions and therefore. Um, these patients tend to do better because of, of the uh, inability for the cancer to metastasize from the primary site. And so what we were able to do was to take these quantitative descriptions of collagen fiber orientation, use it in conjunction with a machine learning algorithm to now predict which breast cancer patients were going to do well versus the patients who are going to do poorly. In other words, patients who uh, possibly will need chemotherapy versus patients who won't need chemotherapy. Uh, these are what are called Captain Meyer curves. Uh, essentially, the blue curve represents what the machine learning algorithm 
was able to identify as patients who did well. The red line represents those patients that the machine learning algorithm was able to identify as, as doing poorly. The fact that they are separated um, with a statistical significant p-value indicates that the classifier did a good job in separating out patients who did poorly versus patients who um, did, uh, did well. And, and so this is evidence that uh, you know, on over 400 patients, this particular collagen fiber orientation uh, attribute that we were able to prize out uh, was significantly prognostic of outcome in these breast cancer patients. More recently, we've actually demonstrated working with the Tata Cancer Center uh, group, uh, including Dr. Sunita Desai and Dr. Vani Parmar, um, that we can take this approach and find other kinds of parameters, other kinds of features that could also tell us about outcome in breast cancer patients. So for instance, uh, we've known that breast cancer grading, which is what pathologists do when they look at these slides, they're looking for certain attributes, they're looking for certain parameters, such as the shape of individual cancer cells, the presence of tubules, the presence of uh, mitotic cells. What we were able to do was to train a machine learning algorithm to go and find those parameters automatically. And that is important because even though pathologists can do a great job individually in reading these different parameters, when you look across pathologists, there's a significant amount of variability and disagreement. And by essentially having the machine do this in an automated way, we're able to come up with a more reproducible way of capturing these various different measurements. And so we've just completed a study where we looked at patients from university hospitals in Cleveland, but also looked at patients from the Tata Cancer Center in Mumbai and showed that regardless of whether the patients came from Cleveland or from Mumbai, that we were able to prognosticate outcome. And we were able to do this and demonstrate this both in lymph node negative, that is early stage, as well as late stage breast cancer.